Hello, Taiwan, and hello, Wakmat. Thank you so much for inviting me back. I'm Ken Paoli. I'm a professor of music at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, uh, USA, Illinois, uh, just outside of Chicago. And uh, I've been invited back as a lecturer, and I'm really happy to do that. I'm only sorry that I can't be there uh, in person and uh, be going to some of my favorite uh, restaurants in uh, Sinchu and Taipei, um, but maybe next year. Uh, so I'd like to get going with a lecture on uh, sieves and a little bit of a demonstration of uh, real-time instrument. Uh, give me just a second and I'll begin the lecture. Computer assisted algorithmic composition with sieves. Yanis Zanakis, in his 1992 version of formalized music, defined the sieve as a well ordered set that can be represented as points on a line if it is given a reference point for the origin and a length u for the unit distance. And this is a sieve. Later, uh, Sever Tepe, in his article Composing with Sieves, Structure and Indeterminacy in Time, sieves are logical filters expressed as Boolean operations on congruence modulo classes. So we see that between these two definitions, Zanakis is talking initially about points on a line and Sever Tepe is talking about manipulations of those points on a line. Chris Ariza, in his uh, article, The Zanakis Sieve as Object, a New Model and a Complete Implementation. Uh, and by the way, this is an excellent article. Um, and in it, um, he uses his computer language called Athena CL and Python to demonstrate the Zanakis sieves, and he makes all of that available for free. So uh, if you're interested in this, this would certainly be a very good source. But Ariza's definition is a sieve consists of one or more residual classes combined by logical operators. A residual class consists of two integer values, a modulus m and a shift I. The modulus can be any positive integer greater than zero. The shift for a given modulus m can be any integer between zero and m minus one. Civ operations and notation. In the revised edition of formalized music, Zanakis uses the following operations. Union and intersection are maintained. From his earlier edition, he eliminates complementation. He does not comment on why he did that uh, in the course of the text. There are two main procedures outlined here. One is the generation of a sieve sequence from a logical formula. And the second is a generation of a logical formula from a sequence. Uh, sieve notation. The modulus and the shift are represented by integers in ASCII code. Uh, the first example is the Zanakis notation in C, which would read 5 shift 1. And the Ariza notation is also 5 shift 1, but the use of the ampersand in Python. And I will be using that symbol uh, throughout the lecture. Pitch sieves. Uh, the pitch sieve, um, um, you may have symmetrical sets and you may have asymmetrical sets. And we'll take a quick look at symmetrical sets first. If I were to take mod 5, shift 1, the set would be 6, 11, 16, 21, 26, etc. Uh, modulus 4, shift 2, would be 6, 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, and so forth. 
the union of those two sets would be 6, 10, 11, 14, 16, 18, 21, 22, 26. The interval series that would occur from that union would be 4, 6 from 10, 1, 10 to 11, 3, 11 to 14, 2, 14 to 16, 2, 16 to 18, 3, 18 to 21, 1, 21 to 22, 4, 22 to 26. Now this particular series will be uh, exhibit its periodicity at 20. Obviously 4 times 5 is 20, <laughs> and 5 times 4 is 20, and therefore the set will replicate and the pattern will replicate when we get to 20 numbers. And of course you can see that we begin on 6 and we have a uh, we come together on 26 and of course that would be the node where this particular pattern would begin anew. Unions of sets can yield symmetrical scales. So for instance if I take mod 3 shift 0 I'll end up with 3, 6, 9, 0. Mod 3, shift 1 equals 4, 7, 10, 1. The union is 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10, 0, 1. The interval series is 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And this will yield an octatonic scale using a half-step, whole-step pattern. If I uh, do the same thing and use 3, mod 3, shift 0, but this time I go mod 3, shift 2, I'll end up with 5, 8, 11, 2. The union here will yield 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 11, 0, 2. That interval series will be 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And that is an octatonic scale. The pattern is whole step, half step. Asymmetrical periodic sets. Using the same modulus with different shifts would yield an asymmetrical periodic set. So, if I have mod 12, shift 0, mod 12, shift 2, mod 12, shift 4, mod 12, shift 5, mod 12, shift 7, mod 12, shift 9, mod 12, shift 11, I'll end up with an interval series that is 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, and you should recognize that as the major scale. And any commonly used scales may be easily derived in this fashion. However, it's more challenging to derive the major scale or other asymmetrical sets using logical operations. And in the famous example from formalized music, Xenakis generates the major scale using mod 3 and mod 4 terms with several operations. So what I'm showing you here, mod 3 shift 2, the intersection of mod 4 shift 0, and the union of that with the mod 3 shift 1 intersection mod 4 shift 1 and the union of mod 3 shift 2 and the intersection of uh, mod 4 shift 2 and the union of mod 3 shift 0 intersecting mod 4 shift 3. Now this is actually a simplification of Xenakis' original notation because he included complementation in his early edition 
of formalized music, but he eliminated it in the later edition. In his piece, Kranerg, uh, Zanakis published the manual chart for the derivation of the major scale, and you can see the modulus, modulus 3, shift 2, mod 4, 0, the intersections, the unions of A and B, the union of A, B, and C, and then the intersection of D finally yielding the major scale. It's tricky, but fun when you get it working. Uh, here is a major scale sieve using logical operators in a graphical object program called Music Wonk. In this particular uh, setup, you see the mod 3 here, the mod 4 here, and then a series of equal, not equal, and, and an or down here. And what is happening is a chromatic scale is being fed in, the comparison is made, and the notes are filtered out, leaving just the major scale that comes out of an if-else object, which is then felt, fed, in this case, to a MIDI tone generator so you can hear it. Uh, to make sure that this just happens, uh, I have already pre-recorded the major scale uh, sieve uh, in a real-time application. And up above, you can see the sliders here. These are set up for the mod 3 and mod 4 uh, shifts and uh, are set up for the major scale. So, um, something else that is interesting is to use pitch sets using various modulus and shifts. So here, uh, we take three different mods with three different shifts. Mod 5, shift 1, mod 8, shift 0, and mod 10, shift 2. And we are putting these in a range that ends with the top of the piano keyboard. And we are deriving the interval series, which is rather long. And then we are transposing that interval set to the MIDI range of 33 to 90. And that leaves us these following numbers, and those equal these MIDI pitches. Now what you'll see is that when you use these different uh, modulus and then different shifts, you are going to get different pitch distributions in every octave. And this can be very appealing uh, and is one of the things I believe that uh, Zanakis felt uh, was an improvement or went beyond the notion of serialism because it allows you to alter pitch distributions in every octave. Now, Zanakis himself favored aperiodic pitch sieves where the sieve periodicity was longer than the actual range of the sound source. So he preferred to have um, sieves that were longer than the range of an instrument. Sever Tepe states, there is a clear and desirable distinction between such an aperiodic pitch sieve and any octavating scales, tonal or atonal. On the other hand, he continues, oscillating in the same piece between periodic and aperiodic sieves, between a recognizable structure and apparent disorder, offers an enticing way of organizing musical events. It is the composer's task to organize the compositional materials, 
the use of varying structured civ sets provides flexibility and a variety of musical organization. This organization can be applied to other musical parameters beside pitch. A matrix for harmonic generation. In his 2007 dissertation entitled Zanakis and Civ Theory, Dimitri Zarchos presents a matrix for moduli 4 and 3. What we have is a matrix where the rows are mod 4, which the shifts 0, 1, 2, 3, and the columns are mod 3 with the shifts 0, 1, 2. So this gives you the complete chromatic scale in a simple 4x3 matrix. Now this allows you to extract harmony by combining elements from the three rows and the four columns. Uh, I have put down here below, a, the major triad would be found at 3040, 3140 right below, and 31. Four, three. So harmony can be gotten by extracting these pitches from the matrix and obviously transposing them to the range that would, uh, would fit. Uh, but everything can be done within the, the range of a chromatic scale from 0 to 11. This is a brief example of a program that I did that generates harmony. It generates six-part harmony and it allows you to fill up a matrix with chords based on uh, that matrix that I showed you. And these numbers are the consonant, these are the ambiguous harmonies, and these are dissonant harmonies. And those numbers correspond to this, and you can change these. Down here is a second matrix where you can actually design your own harmonies if you want. And this matrix can be followed from 1 to 41. Uh, it can uh, randomly generate chords from this group, or it can generate just one group, all group 1, all group 11. At the same time, in order to make this a little more musically interesting, I have allowed the texture to be either all six voices or to be varied. And of course, there's a rhythmic flexibility as well built into the patch. But uh, again, I'm using it just to demonstrate the use of sieves to generate harmony. And I hope that you were able to hear the changes in uh, consonants and dissonants as uh, the harmonies unfolded through the matrix. Rhythmic sieves. In formalized music, Xenakis demonstrates using a sieve to generate a rhythm by setting the elementary displacement unit, EDU, to a given duration. Symmetrical periodic sets can be used to produce rhythmic sieves. Uh, using the example that I used earlier, 5 shift 1 and 4 shift 2, if you remember, gives us a union of 6, 10, 11, 14, 16, 18, 21, 22, and 26. That interval series is 4, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 4. The interval series can be used to generate a rhythmic pattern. The attacks would happen at 6, 10, 11, 14, 16, 18, 21, 22, 26, and the durations would be 4, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 4. Now this would result in a palindromic rhythmic pattern, and uh, basically just taking the first half of this pattern, 
I have put down the rhythmic durations in MIDI time, basically with 24 pulses per quarter note being the uh, standard. So you can see that this first four notes would be six times the rhythmic duration. This second group of four notes would be 12 times this duration. And this group, third group, would be three times the rhythmic duration. Let us turn to an algorithmic sieve generating instrument. Since sieves are a series of points on a line, a set derived from the periodic sieve applied to pitch would yield a repeating melody rising in range from the first to the last element of the set. I believe that this is of limited usefulness, musically speaking, although it's interesting to, to listen to the different uh, patterns. It's most likely a reason why Zanak has favored uh, aperiodic sieves with long and larger ranges. A real-time instrument would need to include linear and temporal variety to uh, produce musically satisfying results. So I started with the uh, rhythmic sieve design, but it's a four voice instrument. And this is the rhythmic section. And there is control provided for four mods and four shifts. And these mods and shifts can either be set manually or they can be automated in a random fashion. The number range of the sieve elements can be adjusted manually, and therefore you can ge generate either periodic or aperiodic sieves. And the durational values can be augmented or diminished manually or automatically. Now for today's demonstration, I've just got them set automatically. But that basically is the rhythmic multiplier you see here. So. Uh, here we have voice one, mod and shift, voice two, mod and shift, voice three, mod and shift, and voice four. They obviously have ons and offs, so you can listen and compare. Here you can adjust the numbers of elements in the sieve. And in terms of the rhythms, you can quantize these rhythms to MIDI values, or you can randomize that and uh, the rhythms will, will not be quantized and squared off. The melodic sieve, again, allows for eight mod controls and eight shift controls. Uh, this allows every voice to generate its own set. So basically here, it's two sets to make one voice. So that's why there's eight. Uh, once again, you can adjust the number range of the sieve manually or it can be done automatically and automated and as a result you can generate either periodic or aperiodic pitch sieves. Now um, transposition is applied in the range of an octave and the transposition is set up to affect all of the voices. Uh, there are some additional controls. These controls are not necessarily sieve based, but they are to try and make things a little more uh, musical. There are velocity changes for each voice that occur in a MIDI range of 45 to 105. So uh, not super soft and not super loud, but it allows for a variation uh, of each pitch so that uh, each pitch doesn't have the same velocity number. And uh, there are tempo changes, and that is done using a if-then, greater-than kind of uh, operation that uh, allows uh, the tempo to change. If the tempo jumps too far, uh, then there is a slew module, so the tempo will actually ramp up slowly to the new tempo or ramp down to the new tempo. And uh, also there is a variable texture control uh, for one to four voices, uh, except I've got to I've got to refine it. I, I noticed uh, that it's it's really zero to four voices, so sometimes it stops playing, uh, which is not my intention. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of additional programming there. Uh, this gives you an idea of the modules used for a tempo change macro. So this is a macro that basically feeds the system clock 
and creates the tempo changes. The program that I'm using for this is Music Wonk. It's a graphic programming environment and it allows for data manipulation and provides a MIDI configuration uh, that I basically port to a digital audio workstation program and my program of choice is Cubase. I have a very extensive Cubase rig and I find that for film work, uh, Cubase is the, I think, the best program to work with. But that's just a personal opinion. I also, I teach Pro Tools, and I'm very familiar with that. And we use Pro Tools HD in our studio, and I'm happy with that. But I, at home, I prefer uh, Cubase. This particular program was designed for real-time applications, and it allows you, it's meant to, to support intermedia installations it includes fractals, probability distributions, serial manipulations, microtonality, cellular automata, text-to-data conversion, and a bio-editor for DNA and protein sequences. And it was conceived and uh, implemented by John Dunn, who unfortunately passed on in 2018. And as a result of uh, his passing, this program is now offered as freeware at Algorithmic Arts, and their website is found here. And you're more than welcome to uh, download the program, and later I will give you my website, and you can download uh, some patches that I have written and uh, placed there. Because um, I do not believe this program is, is going to be revised, and because we are moving towards MIDI 2.0 and products that will make use of the new MIDI specification. I believe that I am going to move away from Music Walk and um, report some of my things into uh, Pure Data, which I use to teach some basic things in my uh, technology course. And so I'm, I'm believing that that's what I will do. But I will sadly leave behind Music Walk because I love manipulating MIDI data. <laughs> All right, so uh, here is my web page, www.kenpaoli.com. Uh, on the, that website, you will find examples of my videos and my compositions, but you also find other papers and you will find music wonk patches. Uh, my contact information, here's my email at the school where I teach, and here is my email at my website. There's a lot of Ken Paoli's there. Maybe I should have just gone with Ken at kenpaoli.com. Uh, we're not quite finished. I am going to escape the uh, PowerPoint, and I'm going to minimize the PowerPoint, and I'm going to stop the subtitles. And now you should be able to see MIDI Wonk, and actually it's, play, it's been playing in the background the entire time that I've been talking to you. So I am going to raise up my monitor just a bit so I can hear what's happening. And I'm about to unmute it. Now, the way it is currently set up, it is set up to be manually set. And I'm looking at complementary sieves both rhythmically and I'm looking at the same thing over here melodically. So this should sound fairly regular. Uh, I believe we're listening to flute, clarinet, vibes, and harp.
that would be mostly uh, periodic uh, settings. So now I am going to I'm going to undo some of that. <laughs> I am going to I'm going to turn the beast loose. Uh, I'm going to go to automated. I'm going to change the. I'm not going to have the elements match up. And uh, now you will hear a periodic material. So that gives you an idea. Uh, I don't. I never think of the uh, of an instrument that generates music in a real-time fashion like that uh, feeds into my uh, DAW, and in there I basically record it and I do my compositional manipulation. I don't. Uh, I'm not looking to make a black box that uh, instantly composes pieces, but I am looking for interesting things. And I think even in that brief listening, you could hear uh, uh, that going between a set of periodic sieves and then a periodic sieves uh, really brings you some contrast. And that uh, Sever to Pay was exactly right. It's rather enticing and interesting uh, to uh, work with those sieves and to work with them in those two fashions. Anyway, uh, let's see here. I think I can bring myself back up. There I am. Uh, really, once again, I, uh, I'm so pleased to ask, uh, have been asked back. And um, I miss my friends in Taiwan. I want to come back soon. <laughs> and hopefully when the pandemic's uh, over, I will be able to celebrate another walk mat with you in person. Again, thank you for your attention. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, uh, good health and good luck to you all. Thanks again.